Ozempic face. We've all seen it. Why do people get it? What's the science behind it? And why does fasting seem to alleviate this problem? Lots of celebrities have lost weight, but unfortunately, they don't look so good. And a lot of people have been saying that they have what's called now Ozempic face. Ozempic essentially is a drug that reduces your appetite, so it's a, like a calorie restricted diet. And when they do that, they get this characteristic face. And it doesn't look so good. You get this hollow, sunken cheeks. You get these eyes which are seem to be sunken into the into the head you look before they lost weight and you can see how full the cheeks are how they have this healthy glow if you compare that to melissa and you see that she's lost a significant amount of weight but she doesn't have ozempic face you see that her eyes are not sunken in her cheeks are not sunken in and she has a full healthy look Here's another celebrity. You see, this is an even more dramatic example. It's because they've lost a lot of the fat that's around their eyes and in the cheeks. And compare this to Chuck from the fasting method. He looks normal. He doesn't look like he's been through some kind of extreme diet. He actually looks like he's always been like that. And yet again, this celebrity did the same thing. You still can't hide the fact when you compare it directly against what she looked like before about that sunken, hollow look. And that's the loss of subcutaneous fat around the face. And here, once again, is the comparison of people who do it with the fasting. And you see that they look like they're healthy. They look like they've always been at this weight. They don't have those sunken cheeks and sunken eyes and all that wrinkly skin. Here's yet another example of Stephanie. If you look at her face, it looks normal. If you look at her arms, you don't see the excess flappy skin that you often get. And why is that? What is the benefit? And this is where fasting is very different from calorie restriction or it's sort of drug-induced uh, older brother, if you will, which is Ozempic. We've all heard the advice, just cut 500 calories a day and you'll lose a pound a week. Ozempic, uh, by decreasing the appetite, makes you almost cut down almost 800 to 1,000. Fasting goes much further, of course. In a day, you might go to zero, or in a less extreme case, maybe 500 calories, such as in the five to two diet and so on. And they're very different because of the different hormonal stimulus. And the severe calorie restriction that you see with fasting drives down insulin, but also drives up other hormones. And these are the counter-regulatory hormones. This includes growth hormone, sympathetic tone, noradrenaline, and these are what drive the fat loss, and it's very different. Just like if you fell off a one foot step a hundred times, it's very different than falling off a 100 foot step once. One will kill you, one won't. So they're very different. There are really five major ways in which fasting is much more beneficial in the fat loss, and in particular to prevent this ozempic face, if you will. Number one, it preferentially removes the visceral fat compared to the subcutaneous fat. And remember, it's the subcutaneous fat that's in the face that gets removed that gives you this really horrible um, sort of skeletal appearance. Number two, it drives down the insulin so that you switch over to fat metabolism rather than carbohydrate metabolism. Number three, it drives this counter-regulatory surge. You get this growth hormone and you get this sort of increased skin elasticity and so on. So if you look at, say, Melissa versus uh, this other celebrity, for example, you see that there's a big difference. Her skin looks very, very healthy and robust. Number four, it drives autophagy, which removes the excess connective tissue and skin. So even when you lose a lot of weight, you don't have to deal with as much of this skin as you see in the case with Stephanie. And we're going to also talk about brown fat and the beijing of white fat that you get with fasting. So the two things that we have to consider in terms of fat 
are where is the fat? Subcutaneous versus visceral. And what type of fat it is? Brown fat versus white fat. Because not all fat is the same. The subcutaneous fat is the fat that is deposited under the skin. The visceral fat is the fat that's deposited in the organ, such as in the liver, and around the organ. The subcutaneous fat is what you see in the face. It doesn't really contribute to metabolic disease. The second thing is that you get this increased growth hormone, and we've talked about this. Not only does it keep you with the lean tissue, but it also helps with bone density, with the autophagy which is also something you see with the fasting that you don't get with the calorie restriction. And that's where the excess cells and the cellular parts are going to be sloughed off or removed. And that's why you don't have, we don't have that problem. The subcutaneous fat, which actually makes people look fairly good because like a filler, it, it fills out the skin. It gives you that sort of robust appearance and it gets rid of the wrinkles. But in order to do that, you really have to drive the insulin down, such as you get with fasting, but you don't really have to go to zero calories in a day. It seems that you can go down to about 600 calories or so. And let's look at this study. When they put people on a 600 calorie a day diet for 12 weeks, what you see here is that the weight goes down after 12 weeks of a very severe calorie restriction, about 12% or so. But if you look at the visceral fat, which is the VAT, visceral adipose tissue, you see a much larger decrease, in fact, almost twice as much removal of the visceral fat, which means you're preferentially removing the visceral fat and leaving the subcutaneous fat, which is perfect because that's exactly what you want. More recent data from 2022 shows that time-restricted eating with and without a low carbohydrate diet reduces the visceral fat. And what they saw in this study, which was a randomized control trial, was that if you put people on a low carbohydrate diet, you can lose weight, but not a lot of visceral fat. If you do a time restricted eating, you do a little bit better. If you do them together, that's the best one. Not only do you see the loss of weight, but you see the visceral fat go down and also the sugars get better, the dyslipidemia and the uric acid. But look at the visceral fat area. There's actually no change with the low carbohydrate diet, any significant change with the fasting. You're really trying to get rid of that visceral fat. When they're looking at mechanisms, we can look at some mouse studies. And once again, they found that a time-restricted eating pattern on mice does significantly reduce the uh, fat and it may be mediated by these complicated things called uh, microRNA. And more recently in 2025, another randomized controlled trial of early versus late time-restricted eating on visceral fat. They found that yes, time-restricted eating did in fact cause a lot more and also the abdominal fat was impacted particularly. All these things tell you that where the fat loss comes from is really important. Subcutaneous fat loss, you get ozempic phase. If you do the fasting, you're going to preferentially lose the visceral fat, which is not only healthier for you, but makes you look better. The other thing is the type of fat. So there's white fat, which is mostly a storage of triglycerides, which is the uh, uh, adipose tissue. And then there's brown fat, which you can see here has a lot more mitochondria, which is the energy producing cells. And this is an, actually an active cell type of fat, which takes the um, fat and burns it for heat. And one of the things that they find can sort of turn this white fat into brown fat, which is called beijing, is intermittent fasting. Active fat that helps you burn calories, that keeps you warm, that increases your metabolic rate, and uh, takes away from that visceral fat. So the bottom line is that if you're really worried about fat loss, you can't just think of it in terms of body weight because then you have lean tissue versus fat tissue, but the type of fat you lose is very important. Are you losing subcutaneous fat, such as with Ozempic and giving you Ozempic face, 
or are you reducing visceral fat, which is the dangerous fat that's going to improve your health? And are you going to generate this beiging of the brown uh, of the white fat into a more like a brown fat? That's actually going to help you from a metabolic standpoint. And that's really where the fasting really starts to shine.